Is uh, mutation burden something you uh, consider of value in second-line therapy? Not really, because we're going to give the drug to the patient anyhow. That said, I think mutation burden is, is uh, certainly a, a surrogate for, uh, you know, uh, patients who are in that higher group to respond, and I think it is going to play a role, probably not alone, but probably with PD-L1 or a surrogate for PD-L1, some sort of gene signature, and perhaps biomarkers to be named later. And I, I would again say that that's probably going to be something that looks at the immune microenvironment in some way, uh, looking at the T cells and the quality of, uh, of the T cells. But yeah, it's, it's certainly very helpful to have that, um, not in the second line, but it might, might help more in the, in the front line or maybe even as we start to think about adjuvant therapy or earlier disease. Yeah, Fred. So Everett, I would. Uh, I know we ha we have a Nayer here in the panel who has been pioneering the mutation burden, and I think uh, mutation burden is a very interesting uh, potential biomarker. Uh, I'm a little bit more skeptical than uh, others uh, on this stage uh, of the following uh, reasons. One, I, I think we will learn that all mutations are not equal. I think we will learn that there are differences in, in the mutation burden uh, depending on what kind of mutations we are talking about. Some mutations are more immunogenic than uh, others, but we don't have that knowledge uh, on this stage. My question is, and uh, Nair might correct me, do we have a harmonized and standardized way defi to define mut mutation burden? Is it based on 16 genes? Is it based on 80 genes? Is it based on 300 genes? Does it matter? I think uh, there needs to be some standardization work done also with this biomarker, as we have talked about earlier, with IHC. So uh, that is uh, two reasons why I'm a little bit skeptic on this, uh, uh, skeptical on this um, issue on, on the current stage. I do agree with Roy, uh, based on uh, the Checkmate 26 data, where it of course, a tumor burden by itself made a difference in favor of nivolumab. But if you are looking on the curves, the curve which flattened, and that is a curve we would like to see in the future, that is a curve which is based on high mutation burden and high PDL1 expression. So that uh, curve, um, even if there are small number of patients on this stage, but I think the combination approach also for biomarkers need to be um, studied further. I, I think we are focusing too much on one single assay rather than what can combination of assays perform in the future. Right. Right. Is, is yeah. the uh, ISLAC going to do a harmonization project for tumor uh, mutation tumor burden? burden? We haven't talked about that yet. <laughs> I think it would be a good thing to get ahead good. of it. Yeah, I agree. Naya, you've thought a lot about this. Well, I, I, you know, I think that, that um, to, to, do, to do a mutational burden analysis correctly, you have to do whole exome sequencing. Um, these extrapolated mutational burdens do tend to break down, uh, you know, for, for lower mutation counts. And I, so I don't know that it's ever going to be a perfect tool because it's extrapolated data. I mean, if you look at Checkmate 026, the upper tertile of mutations where patients did the best had uh, around 250 mutations or greater, so that's per exome, so that's about eight mutations per megabase, but to actually achieve a threshold with, you know, with some of the uh, um, foundation panels, you have to get like 15 or 16 mutations per, per megabase, so you're really just picking the top, top you know, high level mutation. So it's not, it's, I don't think it's ever gonna be very, very good to just do it with a, with a targeted panel. So it's not just that it's not standardized, the, the methodology is not available yet to, to be precise enough? I think, I think you're never going to be able to perfectly align it with exome data. Yeah. Because there's just not enough genes covered. Yeah. And the key is you're 
really trying to find out which are the mutations that code for a neoantigen that's recognized by the immune system. So the mutation burden is rather a broad basket to catch as many of these mutations without having the ability to sort out one from the other. And until we have the ability to do that, this is going to be just a broad estimate and enrichment method rather than a true biomarker. So it's another, just like right. pdl one which is an enrichment uh, rather than a true biomarker. Right.